runes, the language of magic. Odin takes up the runes. Odin is a god of many things and relentless seeker of knowledge and wisdom are chief attributes. He is Odin the one-eyed because of his sacrifice of his eye to Mimir's well among the roots of Yggdrasil in order to drink the waters of wisdom. Another sacrifice Odin made was for the runes. The runes are script used for writing, but unlike the utilitarian Latin alphabet we use today, the runes were symbols for the forces of nature. In fact, the word rune and its cognates across past and present Germanic languages means both letter and secret or mystery. Calling on the runes allows one to access the at calling on the runes allows one to access and interact with these world shaping forces. By taking up the runes, Odin was unlocking a potent system of magic. At the center of the cosmos stands the great tree Yggdrasil. Its, its branches cradle the nine worlds. Yggdrasil grows out of the well of Urd, a pool whose fathoms, fathomless depths hold many of the most powerful forces and beings in the cosmos. Among these beings are the Norns. These sagest maidens, the three Norns, representing the past, the present, and the future, weave our fates with our lifelines, creating the web of the weird. But also, one technique they use to shape the fates is carving runes into Yggdrasil's trunk. These symbols then carry these intentions throughout the tree, affecting everything. Odin envied the Norns' power and wisdom. He knew the runes' native home is in the well of Urd with the, with, with the Norns, and the runes do not reveal themselves to any but those who prove themselves worthy of such fearless insight and ability. Odin takes up the runes. This is what I think of when I see the Hanged Man card. A card that suggests ultimate surrender, sacrifice, and being suspended in, in time. In the Bhavamal, Odin recounts his self-sacrifice. I know that I hung on a windy tree nine long nights, wounded with a spear dedicated to Odin, myself to myself. On that tree, of which no man knows from where its roots run. No bread did they give me, nor a drink from a horn. Downward I peered. I took up the runes. Screaming, I took them. Then I fell back from there. Having been initiated into the mysteries of the runes, Odin recounts, then I was fertilized and became wise. I truly grew and thrived. From my word to a word, I was led to a word. From a work to a work, I was led to a work. Let's talk about the runes of the Elder Futhark. Runes are the letters in a set of related alphabets. The oldest form of the runic alphabet we have is the Elder Futhark. Earliest known sequential listing of the full set of 24 runes dates to approximately AD 400 and is found on the Keverstone in Gotland, Sweden. 
Like our alphabet, the letters in the futhark each make a sound. You can compare the sounds each futhark rune makes to the letters in our alphabet. If you look at the letters associated with the first six runes, you will see where the word futhark comes from. F U T H A R K. Futhark. Runes can be incorporated into your personal magical practices in many ways. One common form of rune magic are as sigils. Rune scripts, as depicted here, a rune script is not a word, it is more like a sentence, a series of runes, each applying their own meanings and enhancing each other. You may find significance in the number of runes and the order. What is most important is their meaning and how they align with your magical intention. This example is a traveling talisman. This is an example of a rune script that can be used for safe travels. It uses the runes rido for riding, eros for strength, Iwas, horse, and Kenaz, beacon. This script tells a story of traveling with strength and in good health along a well-lit path. Both Rido and Iwas are used for safe travels. Between them is Eros, or strength. Kenaz represents light illuminating the path. The position of Kenaz at the right in a forward position evokes forward movement. And then there are bind runes. Bind runes, like scripts, are two or more runes superimposed, used together, and their physical arrangement creates something new. The example here, this is a bind rune for a sacrifice made for protection, like a hunt. Here's another bind room example, bind room for healing, Use, using the rune dogaz, which is day or dawn, tiroaz, courage, strength, and portho, birth or re revelation. The center rune is dagaz, flanked on either side by portho. A double version of tiwaz runs vertically through the center. Red runes. Some New Age sources claim runes must be read or written in blood in order to be activated. Many others disagree. I have found a couple sources that could account for blood runes. In the Vita and Ansgari, written in about 875 CE, it accounts casting lots or chips. They would be marked possibly with sacrificial blood and then shaken and thrown like dice. And the way they land is used to understand the significance. In Igor's saga, written in about 1240, includes a scene where Eagle discovers and destroys a poisoned drink prepared for, for him by cutting runes on the drinking horn and cutting his hand, painting the runes with his blood. Runic divination. The runes can be part of your communication with the divine or tap into hidden knowledge. Remember, the future is always shifting according to what is happening in the present. For the clearest reading possible, find a calm, quiet place to work. Take the time to clear your mind. Meditate if you can, breathing deeply and slowly. And then think about your question. There are many ways to use runes for divination. 
Some advanced ways include casting the runes and interpreting them based on how they, they land. This includes interpreting the meaning of the individual runes and their relationship together. Before you can do anything like that, you must learn the runes and become comfortable using them. The simplest way is to draw a single rune. This is something called, sometimes called Odin's rune. This method is rather self-explanatory. When pulling a single rune, keep questions simple or clear your mind and see what the runes have to say. Another method is the three rune spread. You can draw three runes, one at a time for past, present, and future. You have the option of, you have the option to interpret reversed runes if you place them blindly. A reverse rune may be interpreted if it is upside down or backwards, depending on the medium of your runes. Runes on flat disks can be reversed or hidden if they fall face down, like a coin. Runes on cards or rectangular chips can be reversed if they are upside down. You decide what makes sense to you. As far as we know, the concept of reverse runes is a modern invention akin to tarot card readings. And not everyone ch chooses to identify runes in reverse. In this example, Kenaz was drawn in reverse. So in the past, there was darkness. Iwaz was drawn for the present in trust, which brings Ingwaz for the future potential. The Elder Futhark used for writing Proto-Norse consisted of 24 runes that often are arranged in three groups of eight. Each group is referred to as an eta, or family. The first group of eight runes are phrase eta. Some interpretations call it Freyr and others Freya. My interpretation includes both gods as a dualistic entity, calling it Freys Eta, or family of runes. One interpretation of the runes of this Eta are that they speak to what is needed for basic existence on earth, for experiencing and interacting with other humans as well as the, the, as well as the divine, and for living a fulfilling life. Note the meaning of the runes listed below are not the literal translations, but only part of this interpretation. Fehu means cattle, wealth, associated with the god Freya, or Freya. Prosperity, abundance, reward, good health, and beginnings. Uruz means an aurox, which is a wild ox, associated with brute strength, health, power, energy, endurance, and the creative force. Thurisas means giant, thorn, strongly associated with the god Thor. It can represent danger, warning, protection, contemplation, decisive action, and luck. Asus can represent the god of the Aesir, the god Odin, ancestral god, an ash tree, communication, wisdom, divine power, and a message. Retho, ride, journey, a vehicle associated with travel, movement, 
reunion, change. Ken asks, meaning is unclear, but perhaps ulcer. It's often associated with the torch and light. So it can mean fire, heat, a guide, but also mortality, breakthrough and the creative fire. Gebu, it means gift, generosity or hospitality. Associated with friendship, harmony, talents, and giving care. Wun Yu means joy, pleasure, and hope. Associated with happiness, success, harmony, and good relationships. That completes Freya Zeta. The second group of the eight runes are Hegel's Eta. Some interpretations call it Hemdal's Eta. The god Hemdal is the guardian of the gods who stands watch over Egrasil's rainbow bridge. Hemdal is attested as possessing foreknowledge keen eyesight and hearing. One interpretation of the runes of this eta are that they speak to the unavoidable experiences of life, disruption, change, stalled progress, and even unexpected luck. They help us navigate the more difficult aspects of our lives path and remain, remind us that nothing lasts forever. Perhaps with this keen sense of foreknowledge, Hemdal can warn of such things. Note, the meanings of the runes listed here are not the literal transliteration, only a part of the interpretation. Let us look at each of them individually. Hagalaz, it means hail, I meaning hail, the precipitation, associated with limitations, destruction, chaos, deference, misfortune, transformation. Hail can be a powerful force. Now these. means need or patience, associated with necessity, scarcity, abundance, restriction, but also the festival fire, desires, self-reliance, and receiving care. Isa means ice or to freeze, can refer to obstacles, standstills, stagnation, delay, coldness, solidify, hard, immovable. Yearless, it means a year, often a good year or a harvest and plenty, associated with abundance, reward, fruition, growth, natural cycles, fertility, premonition, dividends. Iwas represents the yew tree. The yew is a highly toxic plant to humans and animals. Poisons made from the yew were used for both murder and suicide. The yew is also considered the tree of life. It is an evergreen that can live thousands of years. And when a yew tree dies, it can be regenerated by its own daughter tree that grows inside the decaying trunk. Often associated with change, new beginning, and magic, but also death, rebirth, regeneration, and life cycle. Pethro, the meaning is unclear, but perhaps a pear tree. It's associated with mystery, secrets, 
revelation, change, luck, windfall, and fruitful. Alleges. It means elk, protection or shielding. Associated with defense, opportunity, being prepared and taking direct action. So willow, it means sun, as in the sun, light, energy, clarity, success, good health, and truth. That concludes Hegel's Eta and brings us to the third and final group of eight runes. They are Tira's Eta. The runes of Tira's Eta speak to aspects of the dance between the visible and the invisible realms, with runes directly connected to ancient deities, natural forces, and humanity itself. And the first rune is Tiwas. It's associated with the god Tier. It often means sacrifice. Courage, justice, victory, strength, a guiding star, passion, and masculine power. Berkana. It means birch. Can be associated with birth, new beginnings, growth, regeneration. The birch goddess, the great mother, feminine power, and family. Iwas, Iwas means horse. It's associated with faith, loyalty, trust, movement, travel, and change. Manas means man, as in mankind, humanity, the self, but also support, assistance, intelligence and also family. Laguz, it means water, the lake or sea. Associated with flow, intuition, the unconscious, psychic ability, the feminine, and growth. Ingwas, Ingwas refers to the god Ing, which was the proper name for Freyr, Ingve Freer is associated with fertility and male virility, but also channeling energy, creative energy, safety, and completion. Dagaz means day, as in daylight, success, hope, breakthrough, transformation, balance. Also, a new beginning. Othela. It means heritage, as in your estate and possessions. Associated with inheritance, ancestral lands, tradition, and family ties. You'll see there were many rooms associated with the family. And thank you for participating in our rune workshop. I would like to discuss a few symbols that were not runes. We're going to talk about Nordic sigils known as staves and other symbols. Egges Helma, the Helm of Awe, first found in the mid 1600s. It was said, it must be made in lead and printed on one's forehead. When a man has expectations, he might meet his enemy and he will overcome him. And today, I don't think we're making them out of lead, but many people this is, uh, use this as a very popular tattoo. It is called the Helm of Awe, 
is thought to strike fear in the beholder. As in other Egis Helma, referred to as the peacemaker, it was first found in a manuscript in the 1500s. And it said, to still all wrath, make this staff on your forehead with the finger of your left hand. Then say the Elgis Hemmer, which I carry between my eyes. May anger run, may conflict stop, may every man be happy with me. Today is often simply known as the strife ender or end strife stab, as to not confuse the names. This stave has a seemingly opposite effect than that of the more well-known Egos Hama. Vigvisir, the wayfinder, is incorrectly known as the Viking compass, unlike a compass that shows you a direction. These staves help overcome obstacles and poor conditions as you find your own way. It was first written in a manuscript in 1860. Although old, not as old as the runes. Let a man carry these staves on him. The man will not get lost in storm or bad weather, though he is unacquainted. And now we'll look at some symbols. This is the symbol of the Mjolnir, which is Thor's hammer. It was used by Thor for both a devastating weapon and as a divine instrument to provide blessings. The symbol of Mjolnir has been found on pendants, coins, and idols to Thor, the protector of mankind. Around a thousand pendants representing the hammer of Thor have been unearthed. Most have very simple designs in iron or silver. Around a hundred have more advanced designs with ornamentation. Here are a few examples. These are designs that are commonly reproduced today. The Volknot can be depicted as three interlocking triangles or as a trifold knot of in a triangular shape. It is thought to symbolize the power of the god Odin, to bind and unbind. Odin has the power to lay bonds upon the mind so that men become helpless in battle. And he can, he, and he can also loosen the tensions of fear and strain by his gifts of battle madness, intoxication, and inspiration. The triple horn, the symbol sometimes called the horn triskelion, the triple horn of Odin, and the three horns of the Mead of Poetry, was first found on a ninth century runestone, shown here. It symbolizes the three casks that held the meat of poetry, representing important elements in Norse myth, gifts, inspiration, wisdom, and creativity. The meat of poetry is a magical brew made from the blood of Kevesir, able to imbue the drinker with wisdom and creativity. The mead is sometimes referred to as Odin's gift. The web of weird. Weird, or Orthor, is the concept of fate. Orthor is also the name of one of the three norms representing past, present, and future. Together they weave our fates into the web with our lifelines. The symbol is believed to interconnect and represent all the possibilities of the past, present, and future. The symbol is made up of nine staves, three sets of three parallel lines. 
it can also be considered a bind room containing all the runes. Those were the symbols. Thank you for joining me. Runes, the language of magic.